working from my side, it's always nice to see uh, familiar uh, faces, people with whom we have worked uh, a lot uh, the last uh, uh, three years. And I think, uh, as uh, Neda said, uh, we should uh, be proud uh, of uh, what we have achieved uh, so far. So, and uh, we have, I think, gone a, a, a very big uh, uh, journey uh, so far. So the first picture is not uh, connected with my anticipation to find myself in a nice uh, sandy beach, as uh, many of you probably also are thinking, but uh, it's to uh, uh, signify all this uh, common journey that uh, we have done uh, together since uh, the action plan of uh, 2017 that uh, the three commissioners included commissioner for uh, uh, regional policy uh, signed in the past in order to uh, make uh, this uh, uh, effort this collective effort of all of us to find uh, more uh, solutions uh, how we can bring uh, uh, change and uh, help the transition in, uh, in uh, rural areas. The second picture is that we have uh, more or less what uh, Paul and uh, Neda said in their uh, opening remarks that we have created uh, the toolkit and we have now more or less uh, a very rich uh, toolkit which is now deposited into the uh, uh, smart villages uh, portal and uh, there we have uh, thesis briefings and of course uh, uh, material that helps also managing authorities local action groups uh, uh, local stakeholders uh, to to reflect and to think how uh, they can uh, bring this transition uh, either, let's say, using uh, different funds like uh, the uh, Rural Development Fund or the uh, European Regional Development Fund coming from uh, DG Regio, etc. And uh, if you connect uh, all these uh, uh, steps, uh, then we lead uh, to uh, the acquisition. The, the result is that uh, uh we are now in a position that we can uh, start uh, more or less putting all these elements into the programming for uh, the new period and uh, one also big uh, uh, question mark that uh, many of you had uh, more or less a concern i would say that was in the minds of many of you was uh, the uh, issue of the money and uh, now the money is not uh, the problem as you have heard after uh, the last uh, uh, proposal from uh, the commission, uh, there will be additional money coming uh, for uh, the recovery of the EU, both uh, from the side of the Rural Development Fund, but also from the side of the uh, uh, European uh, Regional uh, uh, Policy. Uh, in, in fact, I would say that the cohesion policy has become now a central to the European uh, uh, recovery. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, now is the time for change. It's now uh, the time to remember more or, or less uh, the uh, also uh, what uh, we have learned uh, from this process and also what uh, the definition that uh, uh, we have now in our hands regarding the smart villages dictates uh, for all of us to do. It's that we have to think uh, more in a participatory, bottom-up, uh, integrated uh, way in order to provide solutions for uh, uh, rural areas, for smart uh, uh, villages transition, and it should not be uh, anymore uh, the decision, let's say uh, a top-down decision coming from manner, uh, either the managing authorities, uh, that uh, could be the rural development managing authority or the regional development managing authority or the uh, employment managing authority. It should be, uh, 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 we have to create, a, let's say an enabling framework in the next programming period where there is good coordination between uh, these uh, 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 funds and uh, that uh, we put uh, in the uh, driving seat first uh, the local needs, that we listen more 
to the needs uh, and the uh, ideas and the dreams, I would say also, of the local people. And we try to create an enabling framework where we can support them uh, in a flexible way with a quick and a smart, let's say, uh, framework where we provide uh, uh, funds for animation, we front load if needed even from now, technical assistance to make uh, this uh, happening. Uh, next slide, please. And of course, uh, what we need now is to uh, bring all this uh, knowledge and all this, uh, let's say, uh, uh, wisdom that we have developed uh, through our work to the, uh, all the corners of uh, the, the EU. So we have here a big uh, responsibility, all of us uh, coming, uh, first of all, uh, uh, speaking from our side, uh, from the Commission, when we meet with uh, the member states now in the programming period, we have to pose uh, the right questions how the, and to be able to identify uh, if the member states have a concrete uh, uh, plan, how to address the inequalities in the rural areas, how they will bring uh, the uh, uh, urban, uh, how they can enhance the urban rural rings, how they can provide better responses uh, with regard to the missing uh, infrastructure, but also the missing services uh, in uh, the rural areas, how they have perhaps, uh, we have to examine if they have adequate responses to the rural depopulation, etc. So all of us now, we need to bring uh, 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 not only questions, but also the, the solutions, the toolkit uh, we have developed for the smart villages in the knowledge of uh, the managing authorities in the knowledge of the local stakeholders and uh, it has to be not uh, just the uh, knowledge of us the experts here in brussels of uh, these people who were part of this uh, thematic group for a long time but we have to work more in uh, disseminating and putting this information into uh, the minds of uh, the responsible people and we have to make the right questions, but also uh, we are, I think, able, all of us now, to provide some uh, good ideas, some uh, good input uh, for, uh, for the program. Next one. And uh, this is again to signify that uh, winners don't do different things. They do things differently. And this time we have to do things uh, differently. We have to question ourselves whether our approaches of the past really brought the change. And this is not a criticism to any one of us, uh, but uh, I think uh, we're always, it's uh, good to, to question uh, ourselves and what we're doing. Have we brought uh, with, uh, let's say, uh, the funds in the previous programming periods and with our approaches, the leader approach, etc. Uh, the change that we need and uh, we have answered to the needs, to the local needs of all these people. So we have to do things differently and I think that uh, the Smart Villages approach is a really good way of uh, doing things differently in this programming period and trying out an another way of uh, doing things. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, coming to, 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 to cohesion policy, we have, uh, as I said also in uh, previous uh, chances when uh, we discussed uh, this issue in uh, uh, the thematic group, uh, uh, we have uh, two systems. Uh, uh, one is, of course, uh, the system of the rural development, which most of you are more familiar. But uh, it's important that we look uh, uh, in uh, also the domain of uh, the European uh, Social Fund, the European Rural, uh, sorry, uh, Regional Development Fund, and the European Maritime and Fisheries Fund, because uh, the needs that uh, the local communities uh, identify and their vision sometimes uh, needs, let's say, uh, not only additional funding from uh, the funding that uh, you have now uh, from the Rural Development Fund but needs also additional complementary actions which are better, let's say, served by other funds. 
So uh, once again, I would like to draw your attention to the simpler uh, menu that we have uh, for uh, the post-2020 policy. We have uh, five thematic uh, uh, objectives, the policy objectives as we call them. And uh, the first one is for smarter Europe. Uh, here you can support uh, all kinds of uh, investments for uh, strengthening small and medium enterprises, for uh, supporting innovation, uh, research, etc. In, uh, in Europe. The second policy objective is about the greening, the low carbon Europe. Uh, and uh, here uh, there are a lot of relevant investments that we have discussed in the past the potential of uh, the smart villages in renewable energy, in circular economy, in biodiversity. So all these are fundable from here. The third policy objective is uh, the more connected Europe. And here, of course, connectivity, digitalization are key uh, for uh, smart uh, rural areas. And of course, here, when we uh, talk about connected Europe, uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, infrastructure uh, related to mobility, but also to uh, ICT connectivity. The fourth uh, and very important also uh, for the smart uh, villages, uh, I, I think, uh, domain uh, is our policy objective on a more social uh, Europe. Here we have a lot of funding uh, in uh, cooperation also in coordination with uh, the colleagues from DG Employment and with the support of the European uh, Social Fund for all these uh, social uh, services, uh, uh, education, uh, retraining that uh, citizens in rural areas might uh, need. And last but not least, uh, 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 policy objective which I think uh, puts in the core or the local uh, uh, communities from both uh, the urban, the rural, but also the coastal areas and the areas with geographical and demographic uh, specificities like the islands, the mountains, the sparsely populated areas of Europe, where this uh, is uh, a policy objective specifically uh, designed for an uh, integrated uh, bottom-up uh, participatory uh, strategies uh, to uh, respond uh, to, to local needs. Uh, but also uh, because it might be the case that in some countries, uh, like uh, I would mention here the example of Finland or of uh, Sweden, we have in the new programming period some, uh, let's say, uh, prerequisites, uh, some obligations to the member states. So, for example, uh, member states who are really uh, advanced uh, financially, economically, they have to deliver more with uh, the European uh, uh, Regional and Development uh, Fund uh, uh, to the thematic objectives, uh, to the policy objectives one and two, to smarter Europe and greener low carbon Europe. So in our preliminary discussions with uh, these member states, we have heard that they are not willing to program money under uh, PO5, under, uh, let's say, policy objective Europe closer to citizens. But that doesn't mean that they do not have uh, the possibility to support uh, the concept of smart villages through these uh, first policy objectives, where the money will be targeted uh, 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 Eighty percent of their uh, funding that they will receive from the European Regional Development Fund will be targeted to this policy objective. So they can do things, as I said before, around circular economy, around climate adaptation, energy transition, uh, uh, support to SMEs, etc. Next slide, please. Oops. And uh, two uh, last issues that uh, I would like to draw your attention. Uh, don't forget that under the European Regional Development Fund, under our cohesion policy, we have also the possibility of cross-border cooperation uh, programs. And uh, many of the smart villages are in cross-border areas. Uh, most of uh, the cross-border areas of Europe are mainly rural areas. So we can use also these funds and uh, uh, these programs uh, uh, to accommodate uh, and to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, support uh, needs uh, uh, for uh, transformation, for transition uh, 
of uh, rural communities. And uh, the other uh, picture is related to uh, the smart uh, specialization strategies that we have under uh, cohesion policy. Uh, in order to mobilize uh, funding for the support of SMEs, what we do uh, from our side is a big uh, mapping exercise where we go to the regions and we identify which, uh, let's say, uh, regions have a niche uh, in uh, which uh, uh, financial uh, sector and whether there is a, a supporting, uh, let's say, system uh, for innovation. So we look into the research centers, we look into the uh, SMEs, and we identify for every uh, region three, four, five, uh, let's say, important uh, financial sectors. It may be the case that in some uh, regions, uh, the predominant, uh, let's say, uh, economy uh, sector is uh, the agro food sector. In other areas, it's uh, tourism or agro tourism and uh, agro food. Uh, so, and under the smart specialization uh, strategies, there is also potential for the smart uh, villages. We had a very uh, good uh, example, and we can provide again the link if needed. Uh, in uh, some uh, countries where they used even uh, CLLD, they allowed CLLD uh, to uh, be used uh, for the delivery of uh, these uh, strategies. Uh, it comes now to my mind the example of uh, Finland uh, and uh, their uh, strategy for the uh, Arctic. Uh, last uh, but uh, not uh, least, uh, this uh, work in the smart villages, I think, uh, requires us to think a lot about uh, the uh, coordination between uh, the different uh, managing uh, authorities. We have uh, now the uh, lead fund, which is, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, to our help, uh, we can, uh, let's say, uh, with uh, the lead uh, fund uh, uh, in the regulations, we provide simplification and we provide better coordination of uh, uh, between the different funds. Uh, there is uh, now also in the CPR, or the Common Provision Regulations, uh, there is wording uh, how the different managing authorities uh, from the different funds uh, should be coordinating and working together. And that, I think, it's uh, my last uh, message, and I close my presentation uh, here. Don't just uh, uh, work uh, on the side of uh, the managing authority of the Rural Development Fund. Go and meet your colleagues that uh, are responsible with the regional fund, with uh, the European Social Fund, and work together in developing uh, the uh, uh, plans for the new programming period and create an enabling framework to accommodate all sorts of possible needs and ideas that might come from the local. Uh, stakeholders don't preempt their thinking unless you have done a very poor already mapping and discussion and uh, let's say uh, you have met uh, with them uh, and you have developed your ideas uh, don't uh, let's say predefine everything leave some uh, room for their ideas to flourish thank you